Hello, my name is Will van der Aalst and it is a great pleasure to explain to you how process mining can be used to create so-called digital twins. You will see that process mining technology allows us to create a kind of time machine where we can see how we can improve processes. My name is Will van der Aalst and uh, I'm the chief scientist uh, at Salonis. I'm also a full professor at RWTH Aachen University uh, and at Aachen University I'm leading a group that is combining both data science and process science. In Aachen I'm also one of the directors of the AI Center and I'm co-leading the so-called Internet of Production. I'm best known for the research that I did in the, in the field of process mining, therefore sometimes people call me the godfather of process mining. After the short introduction of myself, I would like to, uh, to explain better what process mining is all about. And this slide captures it very well. So process mining starts with extracting data from existing information systems. These can be ERP systems like SAP or Oracle or any information system that is supporting processes in one way or the other way. If you look at the tables stored in these systems, you will see that they often contain timestamps. As we see dates or even precise timestamps. If you have such information, we can extract events from it and use it to do process mining. So step zero is extracting event data. And once we have done that, we can automatically discover processes. The discovered processes show what is really going on. And this is creating transparency. Often processes are very different from what people expect the processes to be. Everyone has typically an idealized view on the, on the actual processes. And in reality, these processes are much more problematic, much more exceptions and problems pop up at places where you don't expect them. After creating transparency, you can use process mining to do conformance checking. So you can indicate what are the behaviors that you consider to be undesirable. And if such things happen, we often call that execution gaps, we can automatically generate alerts. So we can see where in the process are the bottlenecks, where in the process are the deviations, what is causing them, etc. etc. So after this root cause analysis of the execution gaps, we can automatically trigger actions. And this is a new development in the field of process mining. For example, Salonis uh, has a so-called uh, action engine or action flows where based on inefficiencies, based on problems, you automatically trigger workflows that are uh, coupled to the existing information systems and automatically take action to try to address the problems that have been witnessed. If you have enough data and your process is in steady state, you can even go one step further and you can predict what is going to happen. So you can predict, uh, will there be a bottleneck tomorrow? Will this case be deviating? Will this case be late? We can do all of these things and automatically takes actions based on it. Yeah, so this way we get a living organism uh, automatically uh, diagnosing problems and taking the corresponding actions. So this is a small timeline of process mining. So I started to work on the topic in the late 90s, and that was because I was very disappointed in the, let's say, applicability of workflow management technology. In many projects, I saw that workflow management te technology failed because the actual processes were much more complicated than what people like to believe. For quite some time, me and my group, we were the only uh, people in the world systematically researching this field. Yeah, so automatically learning process models which show where the real problems are. But luckily over time, uh, uh, let's say several of my students started uh, software companies. Uh, and at this point in time, there are, uh, there are over 40 process mining 
commercial process mining companies uh, providing software. By far the most successful company is the company Salonis, where I'm uh, the chief uh, scientist. So Salonis was created in uh, 2011. Salonis was the first company to bring process mining closer to the end users, uh, so uh, not just for the, for the experts. And uh, at this point in time, Salonis is uh, the most successful German startup. Very successful with thousands of customers all over the, uh, the, the globe. So software is available at this point in time. And because of uh, the applicability of the software, in recent years, we see a spectacular, uh, let's say, increase in the adoption of process mining. So process mining is widely used and it is also very generic. And this diagram illustrates that a bit. If you look at an organization, you can think about processes related to the customer, customer journeys, uh, order to cash processes, things like that. You can also look at financial processes, you can look at production processes, service processing, you can look at procurement, order to cash, uh, purchase to pay, and all of these things. And in each of these areas there are typical problems. Yeah, so, um, uh, it may be that things take too long, uh, there are de deviations, you lose customers, etc. etc. So process mining can be used to diagnose all of these processes and see how we can improve them. So this is a kind of vague message. It's a bit uh, similar to if one would need to explain what the spreadsheet is, then one would say uh, a spreadsheet you can do anything with numbers. Please note, here you see a screenshot of VisiCalc. So VisiCalc was the primary reason that in the 1970s people were buying Apple II computers. Uh, this was the so-called killer application. Just for this application people would buy computers. And that was because it was very generic and very powerful. Spreadsheets can be used in hospitals, can be used in, in car manufacturing companies, etc, etc. So they can be used everywhere. If you look at process mining, it is very similar. However, it is not about numbers, it is about events and processes. So you can apply this in hospitals, you can apply this in banks, insurance companies. Uh, any organization can benefit from process mining because any organization has operational processes that are often running uh, far from optimal. So process mining is very generic. Let me now link this to the notion of a digital twin, what I promised in the beginning. So if you think about a digital model, then a digital model is a digital image of the real process created by hand. And so people were manually, for example, producing uh, simulation models to do what if analysis. What if we change, what if we add one robot? What if we uh, uh, do these two steps in a different order? This was all manual. If you look at the digital shadow, then the characteristic is that it is automatically generated based on the data. So no longer you need a human modeler to create uh, these models that describe what we are is, uh, to describe what we see in reality. If you look at the digital twin, it goes one step further. So you can see that the green arc is now going in both directions. So we automatically create a digital shadow, and this digital shadow is used to actively influence the process that we are observing. So. If you look at that, then you will see that digital twins are not yet a reality, but digital shadows are very much a reality. One of the important breakthroughs that we currently are witnessing is object-centric process mining. And also a company like Salonis is heavily investing in this. This allows us to create models which are much more realistic than the models that we have seen before. Uh, however, we want to go towards digital twins, but this is not so easy. 
If you look, for example, at the COVID pandemic, if you look at the Ukraine war, you can see that in many situations, processes are not in steady state. And there are certain disruptions which, makes it, which make it impossible to simply apply machine learning because there's not enough data, because you're coping with a completely new situation. So in these situations, we need hybrid intelligence, which combine the advantages of human intelligence and machine intelligence. And process mining fits very well with this notion of hybrid intelligence, because we produce models that people can really understand. To see where the field is heading, it is interesting to compare this to autonomous driving. As I think some of you know, is that there are different levels that describe uh, how autonomous a car is. We typically say that level zero to Z level two, the person is still driving, but starting at level three, the car is really under control. However, at level three, the driver needs to be alert, and if the circumstances uh, uh, require this, uh, the, the human needs to take control over the car. So this has been a gradual development, and it is clear that we are headed towards self-driving cars. However, this is going slow. A nice illustration is the, is the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which was released in May of this year. And this was the first car that had a level three certification internationally. And so uh, that sounds wonderful. However, it can only uh, drive at level three on the highway during daytime at speeds below 60 km per hour. And this is showing that although we like to think that these developments are going very quickly, they are actually taking more time than many, than many of us were thinking. However, the direction is very clear. So if you look at process automation and process management, we will see a similar development. And so we will see that using techniques like process mining, we get improvements every year, but this is taking time. And we gradually move from one level to the next level. So let me come to a conclusion. I hope I made you enthusiastic for the topic of process mining, assuming that you had no background in it. Process mining is generic. It can be applied to any operational process and to any organization. It is increasingly being adopted. There is excellent tool support, for example, the Salonis uh, software. And what is already a reality is that we can create digital shadows that adequately describe reality. However, we want to move towards digital twins, where we do not just diagnose it, but where, based on process mining, we would like to automatically address certain inefficiencies, execution gaps that we see. To realize that goal, we are uh, heavily investing in object-oriented process mining. And at the same time, we do not expect that uh, digital twins, twins will be fully autonomous. Uh, we will need humans because using hybrid intelligence, we want to combine machine intelligence and human intelligence. And if there are disturbances like, uh, for example, the COVID pandemic, for example, and the effects on supply chains, uh, we need to have this mix of machine intelligence and uh, human intelligence. And the development will be gradual. We will have better software and better support every year. Uh, but to get to, to let's say, a fully, fully autonomous organization, we will still need some time. However, as I mentioned, these digital shadows are already a reality. And they show you where in your process are the main inefficiencies. So you can start today. If you want to read more, you can see some pointers here on the, on the left-hand side. There are several courses, for example, the course Process Mining from Theory to Execution is just taking you one day and it will allow you to turn event data into value and improvements of your process. Thank you very much.